Hi everyone, so welcome to Investing for Values. So today I'm going to talk about Virgin Galactic. Um, so they recently just had a new milestone. Um, they have moved to a new base in New Mexico. So that kind of signals that after they've done a bit more testing, they're ready to be operational. Uh, which kind of made the stock price jump by over 20%. So the stock price is $28.68, uh, giving a valuation of $5.5 billion. Um, but there's a lot of talk about this company not being uh, worth its weight in gold. Um, so I kind of want to like disprove that because I think it is worth what it is. Because firstly, you've spent 15 years on this company. Like no one else can come in immediately uh, and try to outcompete these guys because um, there's it just takes a long, long time to establish a space company. That's why there's only three main companies that are really chasing this um, that's SpaceX, Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic uh, and the other two have also spent a lot of time and a lot of money um, so you know this, there's no one else coming in immediately um, so you're considering you know like SpaceX um, sure like they're really good at what they do um, but they're all, they're pretty occupied doing Starlink, trying to get satellites into space, and that's worth more money than space travel itself. Um, and also, they're sending people into um, the space station for NASA, uh, which is also worth uh, estimates are around fifty to sixty million per person. Uh, so that's worth quite lucrative for SpaceX. So they're going to focus on those things. And they're not in a rush to do like any tourism, uh, especially not what Virgin Galactic's doing. So they're not really a competitor. Um, and also Blue Origin, um, they're kind of trying to match um, SpaceX because at the end of the day, like they want to be the ones that hit bigger, bigger like milestones. They're not there to just be a tourism company, which Virgin Galactic is very happy to do. Um, so that's why, in my view, they're more of a monopoly, um, especially that, that they're going to be operational in flights very soon. Um, and even if the other two players did say they want to come into the market, um, they're not going to be able to scale as quick. Um, even though, like, we, you might go, oh, Elon Musk has a spaceship, but even if you have a spaceship and it, it can only... Um, I think the capacity was talked about being 100 people. If, if you take 100 people, um, how many spaceships do you need to really carry everyone? You're going to need a lot. Um, and if even if you wanted to build bigger spaceships, um, that's going to take years. And, you know, at the end of the day, like, when it comes to Elon Musk, he does produce a lot of innovation, but he also works it on his own time, uh, which usually is much longer than um, is expected. So there's that kind of, like, thinking that, especially, all, there's three companies, but... It, all three of them can't scale up as you know as quick as they want. It takes a lot of time. Um, so that's when you consider that um, all three can just coexist in in reality. Like you look at airlines, um, there's not really a one player takes all. You look at cannabis, no one's there's no one player takes takes all. You look at uh, retail, no one player takes all. Um, even when you look at online shopping, you think, oh, Amazon is so powerful, um, yet there is still a ton of online sites where you can buy things from. So one big player doesn't take all the market share. Um, at the end of the day, like Virgin Galactic will be able to carve out its own niche, and it will always have a bit of the market. Um, because like, if you look at what Virgin, uh, what, what Richard Branson's managed to do, he's actually, you know, been quite proven in that he's able to come into established industries and disrupt them. Um, so when you think about it, Virgin Galactic has someone who can actually um, change things as they go. Um, if, if SpaceX said, oh, we're going to do the cheapest travel, then Virgin Galactic could easily do the premium travel. Um, so it's quite arguable, you know, how things will be going in the future. Um, and that's a lot of guesswork, but I think, you know, everyone's kind of looking at the numbers and going, how is this company being worth five and a half billion dollars? Well, um, the, uh, the best way to look at this type of company is valuing it like a biotech. So when you look at biotech companies, um, you think, like, uh, what they've done is um, essentially it's like priceless kind of work. 
and it deserves to be worth a lot of money because of the market it can unlock. Um, so when you think about a drug company that makes a drug that can cure diseases and all that and they're the only ones of the drug so you have to buy it off them or they're one of the few players of the drug and you have to buy either off them or their competitor um, and then they get huge huge valuations um, like I can think of many bi like biotechs that are worth five to ten billion dollars um, that have barely any revenues or just you know like in the revenues of the tens of millions or just a couple of hundred million uh, which once SpaceX becomes operational um, it will be in the hundreds of millions next year um, so when you consider that um, it's it's perfectly valued at, a, at the right space um, like in a sense like you might even say like this this has even a bit more room to go than this because um well based on the current situation like based on what they've built um but never mind how whether they are operational or not you have to consider the amount of time they've spent the amount of money they've spent and the potential that's going to come in because that's how we that's how we value biotechs right um we only value biotechs because most of the work that happens takes a lot of time to get done um, and it tends to have a sort of like um, a competitive advantage or something that protects it uh, and the thing with space is like that's this very very same thing there's not a lot of players uh, it takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of capital like you think about drugs um, through research and development they take uh, hundreds of millions or even billions um, and the same thing with spaceship companies um, the problem is everyone just keeps comparing this with normal flight. Um, it's like saying, you know, like we're looking at an airline, but we're not just looking at an airline. We're like looking at um, a spaceship building company firstly. So we're already looking at something like um, Boeing and Airbus, right? Um, because not very few companies can actually build their own spaceships. So firstly, we're looking, we're looking at this being a, if, if, if Virgin Galactic said we're not going to be flying anyone into space, but we're willing to build spaceships for people who want to fly into space, um, then all of a sudden these guys, do, do they deserve a valuation of, you know, of a spaceship builder? You know, like, you're, you aren't looking at, like, you aren't looking at Boeing and Airbus and thinking, oh, they're valued really cheaply. They're not. Um, the minute they've spent a lot of money building planes, they can commercialize it in a very large aspect. Um, so that's just like spaceship building. Um, so we've also had to consider space tourism. So currently, space tourism is estimated to be, you know, in 10 years, about $3 billion in value. Um, so, like, in terms of space tourism, like, if there's only, if there's three players right now, $3 billion is plenty to be spread around between all three companies. Um, but never mind just that, you've also got space travel, which is more like um, flying to s like space station or to the moon, or just like flying to city to city travel. Um, and that's the thing as well, this is also a market that um, Virgin Galactic's also primed to get into as well. Um, so that's also like, if you look at SpaceX and Blue Origin, they don't have enough spaceship to fly everywhere around the world. So that's the thing, they're not going to all of a sudden scale up and go, oh we've got 500 spaceships. They're not going to be able to build them that quick. Um, so when you think about it, they're all going to be sharing this type of revenue. And I bet you SpaceX is more like focused towards um, outer space. Um, and maybe in, the lo maybe in the long term, it will do the long, long term travel. Because you think about spa the spaceships, they're very large. Um, and then they have more of a high advantage when they're flying the longest distance. But if you look at Virgin Galactic spaceships and the plane, um, they actually suit a shorter distance than, say, what SpaceX or Vir uh, Blue Origin would be good at. Um, so in, in, in that kind of sense, each one is good at different things. Um, and also, like we have to consider that in the, in the future, space industry is going to grow substantially like currently it's valued at a 400 billion dollar in like industry um in the next 10 years it's set to double um and when you've got the company that's building spaceships um there might be even more potential for a new business that could happen 
Um, so, you know, never rule things out. Um, so, you know, like looking at these things, you know, you can see like where in the next 10 years, this company has a lot of potential. Um, and that's why you value it like a biotech. You don't value it like a normal airline. You don't go, oh, what's um, your revenue um, that you can earn currently if you start flying? Um, you're, you're looking into like five, 10 years um, ahead. And that's what a lot of people do with biotechs. Um, and that's the thing. Um, it's Most people don't consider it that way. Um, but that's how you really have to consider Virgin Galactic because even though it's doing travel, um, it, it's doing it by spaceship, which no one can immediately come in and challenge them. Like if you were an airline, um, sure, someone could go to Boeing or Airbus and go, oh, I want to buy a few planes and I want to open my own airline and I want to just start competing with everyone. Um, but the reality is, it's not. no one's really going to be able to do that immediately. Um, and you know like an airline you might be able to do it sometime soon it might still take a couple of years to establish but like a spaceship company um, you know good luck trying to establish that in like a couple or few years you know this isn't something you can just do easily just especially because there's so many different risks involved um, and it's not something you can just um, do easily there's not a lot of people that are trained spaceship flyers there's no spaceship flying school so that's the thing um, these companies just have to train their own pilots uh, and then that's the thing it is they basically built everything themselves uh, from the ground up so when you consider that is five and a half billion overvalued for such a company um, definitely not like in terms of what they're built in terms of what their potential can be it's not overvalued um, and also like everyone kind of thinks too linear firstly everyone's thinking um, it's one player takes all and also no, no one's thinking about in the future that they can actually increase prices if they start off at $250,000 um, and say you know like like demand is actually too high they could actually put the price up or you know or they could put the price down at, but the cost of travel could actually decrease so like currently they can sit about six people uh, what if they build a slightly larger spaceship that can sit like 10 people and all of a sudden they can bring the price down quite a lot um, but they would be making even more revenues because usual cases with overheads they don't actually um, get that much higher if you know what I mean like firstly you've still got the same amount of pilots um, and you might use a little bit more fuel but and it might cost a little bit more to build the spaceship, but that's probably more or less where it um, goes to. Um, that's why we're, what I'm looking at in terms of how I'm valuing this, rather than going, oh, I can make these projections. At the end of the day, projections aren't necessarily that easy, and they aren't always that obvious as well. Um, so, you know, that's kind of my thinking, how you should value Virgin Galactic. Um, and regarding if I have any future projections of this company, like, um, firstly, I think this year, I think they can get to a 8 billion valuation, um, if not slightly higher, because everyone's going to want to value the success, but I think that's going to come along once they actually get into space, and they actually perform um, the first commercial flight, and everyone can see their potentials. Um, and then after that, I think they can just keep growing their valuation outwards because um, of what a specialty you know this company is um, so that's kind of what I'm seeing in terms of that valuation um, but you might have a different view uh, it's, um, it's perfectly fine we can have different perspectives um, do let me know what you think though um, you know it's, it's always interesting to compare perspectives uh, particularly with such a company you know most people will find it very hard to understand and also very hard to value um, that we, you only have to be um, looking at biotechs um, and in trying to value biotechs in which itself biotechs are not an easy type of industry to value either um, so that's why I you know like when you value this company you have to actually look more closer to biotechs um, than airlines or stuff like that 
so th- yeah like, I think that's you know how you should look at it rather than um, looking at the media or looking at other people and them going oh this is overvalued it's not worth um, this current pricing um, but the thing is if you if, if ever, a lot of people just don't don't have the knowledge they haven't looked into this company they haven't looked how you know how difficult it is to build um, everyone's just looking at it as oh this one you know the minute SpaceX does it it takes the whole market it really doesn't like it's like saying Tesla takes the whole market when it does electric cars it doesn't because firstly the cars are quite expensive and secondly they can't ramp up production that quick so there's always going to be a lot of competitors the market's always going to be shared like you think about most situations and markets are always split between different companies of course one market one company might have a larger market share but not all of them are going to be equal and there's not just going to be one um, so that's what I want to you know share and help you know people understand how Virgin Galactic is valued um, in terms of my view anyway um, though let me know if your view is different or if you have any other companies that you don't understand um, certainly let me know I always you know like thrive on a challenge to just try to value companies um, and that and that kind of just gives me a chance to also improve the way I value companies you know practice makes perfect um, and I've been valuing a lot of companies in a, for a very long time um, including biotech so that's why when I say when you look at companies like this um, it's actually closer to a biotech than an airline um, in terms of valuation and how people should value it um, until then I hope this is helpful for anyone that's um, feeling a bit lost about its valuation um, and until then um, good luck investing everyone